Hey everybody, so I want to show you today how we're going to do the three pass reading strategy. And to do that, I'm going to show you my noodle tools and an article that I picked. So I want you to imagine that I've decided to try to answer the question with my research, how might you tell if someone is lying or not? It's a very juicy topic. So I found this magazine article using the databases, and I wanted to show you that inside Noodle Tools here, I can go ahead and I can visit that live web page. If I click here, then it'll open it back in Gale for me. So that's pretty handy. And here it is. Paul, and I want to show you how the three pass approach might look on just one article. The first pass, I'm just trying to get a general idea about the paper and whether or not I'm going to keep going. Very often, if I follow this approach, I may reject this article. It might just not be the sort of thing that I want to use at all, right? So I'm just quickly scanning through the article, looking at the things that it's already highlighting for me. So for example, I can see here, okay, what is this called? It says, I am a terrorist. Yikes. Uh, is that even on my topic? How does that work? Oh, okay. It says then, at least that's what I've been told to be as I'm sitting at a computer in the lab adjacent to J. J. Peter Rosenfeld's cluttered second floor office in the psychology department at Northwestern University's leafy campus. Okay, I'm going to keep going a little bit. Electrodes are attached to my scalp behind each ear above and below my left ear, and I'm in the middle of my forehead. I'm thinking about how I can lay waste to the city of Houston, or rather trying not to think about it. After all, I'm a terrorist. I'm trying to conceal the fact that I want to lay waste to the nation's four lar fourth largest city. So the article itself is like not, doesn't get right to the point. It's sort of trying to suck me in and get me reading. So if I don't find something pretty quickly that I feel like is actually going to lead me to know something more about whether someone's lying or not, I might just reject this. But let's have another look. What I'm going to do now is just see if I can find within the first like five second, five or six words of each area, can I even see that this is going to be on the right track? So the next part says, Rosenfeld, who for 20 years has been studying brainwave activity. Oh, brainwave activity. Cool. That might be helpful. Premise of the test is that a suspect, suspect who knows details of the plan, the location, the method, and the timing will emit a tell, telltale response from brainwaves. Oh, that's another good piece. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, a quote here. If you had a suspected terrorist in custody and you had some idea what he was planning to do next, you could give him this test, says Rosenfeld, a pioneer in the field of neuroscience-based lie detection. You wouldn't have to waterboard him and you'd extract better information out of him too. Okay, that's actually a great quote. All right. I'm feeling like right now I'm probably going to read this article in more depth. So I would say if I can just continue down and see, aha, here's another title, new tools, new urgency. It's going to have um, the development of an actual effective light detector. Yeah, I think this is going to be useful. Here's another one, deception and detection. The next empirical attempt to develop an, a lie detector was through voice stress. Oh, this is like history now. Okay, that's another topic. Cool. So I can already see I've got multiple things like how to read brain waves, the invention of a lie detector, and the history of a lie detector. Okay, this is actually becoming pretty good. Recognition and memory. Experts agree that the pre P300 wave is a well-established scientific phenomenon. Okay, I don't know what that is, but it sounds useful. I'm going to put it in green. And keep going. Claims in question. But Farwell's claims are widely discounted and in the relevant scientific community. Critics say there's little research other than his own to back up his claims. Oh, bummer. But who's this Farwell guy? This isn't the same person who we were talking about at the beginning. Okay, I would have to read more deeply if, I'm, if I want to understand that. 
Um, still in the discovery phase, all of the studies involved relatively small samples. Majority have not tried to access deception on an individual level. I still don't know what we're talking about. I feel like I haven't read enough now to really understand what's going on here. Only a handful of the results have been replicated by others, and most of the experiments have been done on healthy young adults. No one has tested children, the elderly, or people with physical or mental illnesses. That's a kind of an interesting point. I think I'll just hold on to that one too. And let's keep going. Rather than reading the whole thing, I'm going to just scan again. Facing the lies, another technique championed by retired University of California at San Francisco psychology professor Paul Ekman. Well, there's lots of expertise in this article. And I do remember that old TV show about micro expressions. I think this could be useful. Another thing that could be useful. I'm going to hold on to it. Okay, and that's it. Now, this is from 2009. So thinking about that test and whether or not it's useful, um, like in terms of if I'm going to keep this going or not, I think overall there are a number of people who are recommended in it, and I might be able to use that. The conclusion itself says this. Really proposes a pre-market approval process similar to that used by the Fruit, Food and Drug Administration and its governing of the introduction of new drugs. We need to prevent the use of unreliable techniques and develop fully detailed information about the limits of accuracy of even reliable lie detection, he says. Otherwise, honest people may be treated unfairly based on negative tests and dishonest people may be, go free. So that's not really the same topic I'm looking at. That's really sort of like about ethics and whether we can use lie detector, detectors or not. But there is something in this. Hmm. Should I go on and do the second pass or not? Well, I think actually I've probably got four different subtopics, which could be four different note cards or four rows on your research sources chart. So I'm starting to think maybe I should give this the second pass. Okay. Time. Now, if you look at how long that took me, it wasn't very long. I would say five minutes or less, right? And all I did is I went through and I said, what kind of category is this? Oh, this is a magazine article. Okay, which other papers is it related to? Well, there's a lot of different theories here. We've got technology theories. We've got psychology theories. We've got theories about um, criminology and how to catch criminals. I think it could be pretty useful. Um, correctness. Do the assumptions appear to be valid? Well, yes and no. With a 2009 date of when it was written, it, I can probably find something that's more recent, but at the same time, um, the American Bar Association isn't going to just publish anything. This is going to be pretty like legitimate, right? I think it does have quite a bit of stuff in it that could be a good contribution. And definitely it's going to help me fill in stuff. Is the paper well written? Well, there were parts that I didn't understand, but maybe my second pass will do it. So now in my second point pass, what I'm going to try to do as I'm reading it is collect more of these things. So when I think about my pink section here, I'm thinking about pink meaning related to technology or the brain, right? So then down here, this is the development of an effective lie detector. I made this orange, but now I'm thinking it actually kind of goes with blue. So I'm going to go with change it to blue because blue will indicate this is like the history and the history of lie detection would be an awesome topic for my problem, my paper. Um, and then down here, green again, this is all about science and about waves and things. It might be beyond my idea, but I think that would be really useful. So I'm going to keep going and look for scientific evidence about catching people in a lie. That would be a great topic too. All right. So you see, now that I'm starting to do this, if I was to read this closely, which I won't do an entire video on because that would be 20 minutes, but you can see that's how I would approve it. So then when I'm back into it, I would end up with some new note cards on my noodle tools. And that's what I'll show you next.